Hello there everybody, this is Anders Block again, your co-teacher for the new urban life across the globe summer course. My topic for this second online unit is situational mapping and analysis. And it relates in part to the tradition of urban ethnographies that I talked about in my first unit. As Adel Clark makes clear in the text that you find in your course readings, situational analysis is an approach to social research that may work well with ethnographic data and materials, but it can also work well with other kinds of input, including interview, historical, visual, documentary, and other discursive materials. So in other words, if we think of ethnography as chiefly, or at least partly, a data-producing technique, then situational mapping and analysis is more about the process of analyzing such materials. I've chosen to talk about situational mapping and analysis here for a couple of interrelated reasons. First of all, Clark's outline of this approach amounts to a sophisticated reworking of that tradition in qualitative social research known as grounded theory, which is important also in urban studies for both theoretical and methodological reasons. Second, Clark's specific attention to the situation as the prime unit of analysis has much to offer to the study of urban life, activism and politics. And this is shown also by urban work that references Clark as an inspiration, and I will return to this uh, later. Third, and importantly, as you will have seen from the text, situational mapping in its different forms is also an eminently practical approach, oriented in particular to that early stage of the research process where one is really trying to hone in on the most important aspects of one's complicated research setting. And as such, I suspect and hope that the approach will be useful for you in your mini fieldwork. In any case, in the second segment of this talk, I will outline how I myself use elements of this approach in my research into urban activist and planning engagements with sustainability issues. The term situational analysis has a long history, tied in part to the Manchester School of Anthropology that I also mentioned in my first unit. However, I will focus here on Adel Clark's approach, inspired as this is by symbolic interactionist theory and grounded theory methodology. Adel Clark is professor of sociology at the University of California, where well, she's retired now, she was until 2013, and she works on social and historical dimensions of science, technology, and medicine. She's considered an important heir of the grounded theory tradition, which has become one of the most widespread approaches to the empirical study of social life through qualitative research and analysis. In essence, grounded theory means the attempt to build one's analysis from the data up by way of an initial process of open coding, which later densifies into more analytically ambitious categories oriented to the substantive area under study. The goal then is to develop a substantive rather than a formal theory of one's area of research interest, realizing also that existing formal theories are likely to be not uh, uh, sophisticated enough to be of much assistance to your work. Now, Clark's reworking of this tradition is to move from an action-centered to a situation-centered approach, one that is meant to broaden the perspective and to be sensitive to larger domains of social action, as she says. In the tradition of symbolic interaction theory, she calls these larger domains social worlds and social arenas, respectively. And to briefly define these terms, and Clark could perhaps have done this more carefully in the text, a social world basically means a relational and circumscribed universe of discourse and meaning making shared by a set of groups and collectives. In the context of science and technology, for instance, a discipline like physics or a profession like medicine may be seen as a social world. A social arena, in turn, is a space composed of multiple social worlds that crisscross and often conflict with each other around issues of mutual concern and commitment to action. To stay with a medical example, a hospital could be analyzed as such an arena as could the wider setting of health policy around research and treatment of patients suffering from a specific disease. Here, the term situation itself requires a bit of reflection. Generally, Clark and others in social science usually deploy the term as an alternative to two other and more familiar terms. On the one hand, 
action on the other structure. The term situation, in other words, is used to signal an alternative to this, some would say false, choice of either focusing on specific individual actions or focusing on purportedly wider structures of, say, economic inequality, gender, ethnicity, and so on. Instead, a situational approach like Clark's focuses on capturing the relations that matter for a certain research problem in between individual practices, groups, organizations, technologies, discourses, economic and political influences, and so on, within a specific social situation. Here, the situation may be defined as a temporally and spatially bounded series of issues and events which the analyst abstracts from the ongoing flow of social life. And of course, such situations may be delimited in either narrow or broader senses. Clark gives the example of what race means in the social arena of cardiovascular disease treatment in the United States today, and we can say that this is a fairly wide-ranging social situation requiring also further work of focusing for the research. And this indeed is where Clark's main practical contribution comes in. When interested in such extensive and somewhat amorphous social situations, and I think we will often be in urban studies, a good approach is to think cartographically and to try to map out the research situation at hand. This is particularly true in the early stages of a research project when one is confronted by too much information, too much complexity as Clark calls it, and where one thus needs to gain some overview over the salient and perhaps less salient relations at work in one's social arena. Here, the term relation is key. When one maps, or what one maps in situational analysis, are not the individual entities, but rather the sustained relations, power, negotiation, alliance, cooperation, and so on, that are at work amongst them. Situational analysis could be seen as partaking in a wider relational turn in social research since the 1990s. Clark distinguishes three main types of cartographic approach. With situational maps, one lays out the major human, non-human, discursive, historical, symbolic, cultural, political, and other elements in the research situation of concern. In order to answer basic questions such as who and what are in the situation, who and what matters in the situation. As Clark says, these situational maps are meant to work against too early simplifications of the research setting at hand. Then, secondly, social worlds or arena maps lays out the collective actors and the arenas of commitment within which they engage in ongoing negotiations. These maps provide what Clark calls a meso-level interpretation of the situation, focused on specific institutional and organizational dimensions of issue relations that can often be overlooked in either overly structuralist, macro-focused work or in micro-ethnographic accounts. And lastly, positional maps lay out the major positions taken and not taken in the data vis-a-vis -vis particular discursive axes of variation and difference, concern and controversy found in the situation of concern. Such maps, we might say, seek to highlight the often contradictory positionalities that people and groups adopt at the expense of more simplistic tropes such as the powerful versus the powerless or the exploiter versus the exploited. I will give a practical example of these map-making approaches in the second segment of this talk. I will draw, as I said, mostly on my own work into the way urban uh, politics around sustainability unfolds. But to round up here, I want to emphasize that the value of situational mapping and analysis is, is, is viable also in urban studies, and this has been widely asserted. Edgar Piazza, for instance, who is a well-respected researcher of African urbanism, has recently hailed Clark's approach as a rich and spatialized conception of how to research the urban, an approach that is valuable, as he says, to advance a more grounded and differentiated understanding of African urban settlements. Similarly, Michel Salazar-Perez and Gilles Canella 
deploys situational mapping as a critical tool for opening up and highlighting different urban imaginaries in the wake of what they call disaster capitalism in post-Katrina New Orleans. Finally, it should be noted that Clark's situational analysis resonates strongly with what we might call assemblage ethnography as a methodological strategy for how to trace and map fluctuating assemblages of human and non-human actors in the city. Sean Hillier, for instance, has recently promoted this as an approach to studying urban planning, including as a way of researching the power-knowledge relationality of what Michel Foucault would have called the dispositives of urban planning. The point then is that, as any methodology, situational mapping opens up multiple strategies of, open re of urban research. And I will turn now in the second segment to talk more about some of the ways in which I myself try to use this situational mapping in the city.